Hi. In this video, we are going to speak about, discuss about uh, beam steering and array feed networks also. Okay? So in the previous video, we have discussed about uh, the in field intensity pattern for phased array antennas and for two-dimensional radiation, uh, for two-dimensional array also. Okay, now here, let us see what are the different types of feeding networks and what are the uh, different ways the beam in electronically steered phased arrays can be steered, okay? Basically, there are two ways. So <clears throat> let's start by, with one. So usually the beam of linear array can be steered in angle. Okay. Uh, by changing the relative time delays between the elements. So that is one way. So here the beam of linear array is steered in angle. So angle in the sense, the direction. Okay. So that is possible if we change the relative time delays between the antenna elements. Another way is by properly varying the phases of the signals applied, with, that is relative phases of the signals that are applied to each antenna element. So this is what we have seen, the example which I showed you of the phase arrays, the figure which I showed you is uh, when the phases of the uh, radiating elements are different with respect to each other. So basically these are the two ways, one is by changing the relative time delays and one is by varying the phases of the signals that are applied to each antenna element. Okay, so let us see one by one what are these two. So consider the first, that is changing the relative time delays. Okay, so consider this first figure. So this is the figure in your textbook. Mm, now, so consider this figure. Change one second. Yeah. So this is the um, mm, first method and this is the second method. Okay, this one. Now let us see the first figure, that is A, okay. In this, these are the two antenna elements, so one and two, okay. Uh, so assume these, assume only two antenna elements, okay. So this will apply to N element antenna arrays also. So assume these two antenna elements are equally spaced, so that is D is the spacing between them, here also, here also. Now, <clears throat> the signal which is coming, the incoming signals, Assume the antenna is acting as a receiving side, receiving uh, antenna array. Okay, so incoming signal is at an angle theta naught with respect to the normal of the antenna element, okay, as in the previous cases. Okay, so uh, the si signal which is coming from the target is arriving at element two. This is two and this is one. Okay, so this is arriving at element two before it arrives at element one. And what is the difference? The extra distance traveled is d sine theta. So this you all know. Okay. So now, now if this d sine theta, so that means the signal is delayed at uh, uh, element one, correct? So it is reaching element two earlier than it is reaching element one. So what is the delay? That delay is because of this extra distance that is d sine theta. Now if you um, deliberately delay the signal at element two, so, so the time shift is d by c, sine theta. So this is delta t. Okay, so assume we are delaying the signal at element 2 for a time delta t is equal to d by c sine theta. So d by c sine theta is from this d sine theta. So when you divide it by c, it becomes delta t. Okay, so d by c sine theta. So when this delay is applied to element 2, what will happen? Then both of them will be in time coincidence. Okay, so then, so since there was a delay uh, from, for the incoming signal to reach one, and we have deliberately included one time delay in two. Now, both of them, and antenna element one and two, will be in time co uh, coincidence. And then, when they are added together, the main beam will be uh, uh, in the direction theta naught. Okay, so theta naught is the direction which we require. Clear? Okay, so that's this one way. Okay, so the beam steer occurs by changing the time delay here. Okay, so this, uh, the problem with this uh, configuration is it is a little complicated. Okay, so because you have to induce time delay. So instead, instead of inducing time delay, if you employed a modulo to phase shift here, instead of employing a time delay, if you employ a phase shift that is equal to phi is equal to phi here, phi is equal to same See, phase shift is the same which we saw in previous slides. That is 2 pi d by lambda. That is beta d 
sin theta naught. So if you induce this phase shift, where f naught, that is uh, this uh, uh, 2 pi d by lambda. So lambda is c by f, right? So that f, c by f naught, okay? So f naught will be the frequency. So in that case, when you apply such a phase shift, which is corresponding to the d sin theta naught here, the extra distance traveled at one, then what will happen? The signals are going to be in phase rather than they are coincident in time, okay? So that is what is the second method. So this is time delay steering and this is phase delay steer. So in a linear array, if you want to be this to be implemented, you have to insert uh, at each antenna element, you have to insert the phase shift. Okay, so the total uh, phase shift will be some uh, M5 like that. Okay, so if the phase, so here the antenna number one is a reference. So there is no phase shift. So you can see in antenna number one, there is no phase shift. So antenna number two, we have put a phase shift. Clear, because what? Because antenna number one is a reference, correct? So antenna number one is a reference. Hence, this has zero phase. I hope now it is clear. Whenever we say that, there is a zero phase in antenna number one. Because antenna number one has the delay, correct? Compared to every other antenna element. Now, suppose you have a third antenna element here. Okay, one second, I'll just clear this. Now, suppose you have the third antenna element here, okay? Like this, and then you will again have a phase shift here, here, and then it is connected like this, okay? And the distance between them is D itself, okay? So, incoming signal as such again theta naught itself so the extra distance travel now becomes 2 d sin theta to theta naught correct so what will the phase shift be 2 phi so here it was 5 in the third one it will be 2 phi in the fourth one it will be 3 phi and so on because everything is taken at the one antenna number one is taken as the reference so when you compare antenna number three and one extra distance will be 2 d sin theta naught when suppose there is fourth element uh, then the extra distance travel will be 3 d sin theta naught. So the phase shift will be accordingly given. Understood? So this is 1 5, 2 5, 3 5, and so like that. So finally, nth element will have n minus 1 psi. Understood? The phase shift like that. So this means what the phase difference between each element is 5. Correct? So here it is 0, here it is 5. Correct? The difference is 5. Here it is 2, 5. So the difference is again 5. So the phase difference between each element is going to be 5. Clear? So now the normalized relation pattern of the linear array, uh, which has isotropic elements, is given as this. Okay, so this is the same expression which we saw. We saw this much. That is uh, sine square n phi d by lambda sine theta by sine square n square sine square phi d by lambda sine theta. So here you will, because theta is the general uh, version. Now, here the angle of arrival of the uh, signal is theta naught with respect to the normal of the antenna. So we have a sine theta naught expression here. But the maximum of this pattern occurs when, when sine theta is equal to sine theta naught. So theta naught is the direction of the uh, main beam. Correct. So we are steer, we are by giving the phase shift corresponding to this theta naught. So, so we just saw that here phase shift is given what? 2 pi d by lambda sine theta naught. So when you give such phase shift and then multiply, multiplied versions of this phase shift in each antenna element, you're going to get a main beam, which is pointing in the direction theta naught. Clear? Yeah. So that's how it is. And the maximum occurs at theta equal to theta naught. Right? So sine theta equal to sine theta naught. Like that. Clear? So that's how the beam steering happens. So basically, because the time uh, delay steering, that is, this method is complicated. Okay, so time delay steering requires switched lines. That is one problem. And it is more lossy and then the cost is more. So usually phase shift shifter steering is preferred than the time delay steering method. So these were the two beam steering methods. So now let us see next topic that is feeding an array. So what are the different types of feeding methods? So we, whatever figures we saw just now were on uh, the network which is parallelly fed, the linear array which are parallelly fed, okay. So we saw parallelly fed array like this, correct? <clears throat> so here uh, variable phase shifters, you can see phi, two phi, three phi, right? So phase, variable phase shifters are um, used at each antenna element. So this is a linear array, correct? So one, two, three, four. 
a linear array like this in which variable phase shifters are used at each antenna. So this will be phi, this will be two phi like that. We have to feed separately. So this is uh, parallelly fed. So this is a four element array, okay, which is parallelly fed, right? So you can see the input is here and then parallelly they are fed to each antenna element. Okay, so some uh, power splitters can be used. Like uh, these are the hybrid junctions can be used uh, to give such feeds. So usually this type of feeding is also called as uh, corporate feed, okay, corporate. C-O-R-P-O-R-A-T, so corporate feed. This type of parallelly fed array is also called as corporate feed because it resembles the, uh, in a corporate company, it resembles the uh, chart, the employee chart is there, no, organization chart. So it resembles that, so hence it is called as corporate feed also, okay. Now the, Second, just take this. Yes. So the phase shift in each element. So this is phi. Okay. So just replace this with phi here. Okay. So the phase shift in each element is what two pi d by lambda sine theta. Clear. So in here it becomes two into this. Here it becomes three into this, and so on. Okay. So the power is equally divided among all the elements. So if the loss at each element, suppose the loss at each element is LPS. Okay. LPS, capital L, loss, okay. So um, imagine the loss at each element is LPS. What will happen? The entire, because it is parallelly fed, the entire loss in the parallel uh, fed network will also be LPS itself because it is parallelly fed, correct? It is not going to get multiplied. So suppose the loss is LPS, so the same loss is going to be applied in all the entire parallel feed network. So that is uh, one fact about parallelly fed arrays. Now the next type of feeding array is series fed linear array. You can see series fed linear array can be of two types again, where one is when the feed is given from one end from here. And the other one is when the feed is centrally fed. So from here, see the centrally fed. Okay, so that are the two ways. So both of them are series feed, series fed linear array. So each phase shifter has the same phase. So you can see this. Right, so that means we have to give only one steering command, correct? So in parallelly fed network, you have to uh, give give different phase phase shifting uh, phase shifters in each antenna element. So that was one uh, difference. Here you just have to give just one steering command that is phase five. So that will be given to all the antenna elements. So that is one advantage. So compared to the n minus one phase commands, which has to be given to parallel event network, here we have to just give one steering command. Okay, so this is one advantage because uh, it's sim the computer job computer's job is simplified, correct? To generate the phase commands. Yeah. Now the disadvantage of this series feed network is what the loss. The problem is if there is a loss in uh, uh, one network, that is, if the loss is LPS. And if the loss in one network is LPS, the loss in the entire array network will become what? N minus one into LPS. So it's getting multiplied with the number of antenna elements, which is very worse, right? So this is the very big disadvantages in series speed network. Okay, so this is usually unacceptable. So uh, based on your needs, you should choose if you need parallelly fed network or series fed network. Here, that was about uh, beam steering and feeding and array, different types of feed which can be given to this array. Okay, uh, I hope you understood. Thank you.